Hi guys, a really warm welcome back to my channel. So today I'm talking about something that I want to see so excited about to share with you. It is Vinted, the secondhand pre-loved clothing app. And I'm going to be sharing basically a 101. So I asked over on my Instagram, which is Laura Jana Jarvis, all questions that you might have about buying and selling and how to make your items sell and how the app works and what it is. And I thought I'd do a whole video on it because although I've got lots of things that I want to share, maybe in a haul, let me know if that's the sort of thing you want to see. I thought maybe it would be a good place to start actually showing you what Vinted is, how it works, why you should be using it. So I hope this video is helpful for anyone looking to start using Vinted or maybe they use it and they don't quite know how like how it works or if you're a seller and you aren't selling anything and your clothes aren't selling, hopefully this video is going to give you lots of tips and tricks to get your items sold and if you're a buyer, how to do it. <laughs> so let's get into the video and share with you all about Vinted. and slow fashion is becoming more and more popular and I for one I'm here for it. I love that Vinted has a kind of thrifting feel to it. So I have dabbled a little bit in Depop. I haven't done any of the other selling apps and I thought I would do a little bit about how it differs from Depop. I haven't been on Depop for a while. If I'm honest I kind of just got a bit put off by the whole platform. It was quite expensive to sell. Uh, the use interface was it I think there's differences and I'll go on to those a bit later on in the video but I think with Vinted it's so much more of like a thrifting vibe it's sellers can be more creative they have got you know upcycling you can flip things I just feel like it's a little bit more like pre-loved things things that you know you would find in a charity shop whereas Depop it's been around a lot longer the the average user is, I think, 50% are in their teens. So with Vinted, there's a real shift, I think. It's a lot more things that you would find in a charity shop, and the prices re reflect that as well. It's also not as well used and not as oversubscribed to. So I think it's about 35 million users at the moment, maybe 40 million now. It is growing a lot, and you may have been seeing lots of Vinted adverts going around. And I think it's, it is becoming to shift a little bit into a bit more expensive, but generally you will find things for three, four, five pounds. Whereas with Depop, I think it's more like as more designers or just the value of things are way higher or the price, I shouldn't say the value. But you know, if you go into a charity shop, you're not gonna be spending 20 quid on a dress. So with Depop, that's what I was finding. Whereas with Vinted, you will be buying it for five or six pounds. So I'm gonna be sharing my first impressions and then later on in the video, I'm gonna be sharing how to list, how to sell, how to buy. So stick around and I will be listing a few items live for you so that you can check it out and the whole process. So if you wanted to sign up, my link is in the description bar and you'll be able to sign up for free and start creating your account. I'll show you how easy it is as well to create an account. And I would really love to know if you have used it yourself. Let us know in the comments if you use it. Feel free to leave your username in the comments as well for anybody that sells on there or buys and hopefully that will help you guys out if you're trying to sell some things and just raise a little bit more of awareness of your page. So I can't speak for Depop entirely because as I said, it's been a long time since I used it. I kind of just gave up on it because I found like it was really expensive to sell things. So you would sell things, you'd pay a buyer's, a seller's fee, and then you'd also pay the PayPal fee. So that was taking like about 40% of actually what you were selling at. So I didn't really like that about that. Vinted is brilliant because they actually don't charge the sellers a fee. How they do it is they charge a buyer protection fee or a service fee on the buyer's end. So actually that's incorporated into the buyer's fee. So for a seller, it does mean that it's like free to sell. So if you sell something for £10, you will get £10. Another thing that I absolutely adore about Vinted is that they just sort the shipping labels out for you. So the way it works, and let me show you on my phone whilst we're going through this. So I actually have just sold something, which is perfect timing. So I can show you on here my orders. So I will show you something that has just sold. So this is just literally sold yesterday evening and it will just give you a bit of information about the price that they've bought it for. So you can see here what items they were. These were just some children's clothes that I had of, from the boys. So usually I would just give this to charity 
but this time I'm actually selling it just to test it out as a seller and I've got so many things, bags and bags of clothing that's always gone to charity. So I'm testing this out now and the thing I love here, so it says sold and 325 for the clothes and 320 for the posting. So obviously I can't show you her address just to keep it private. But it will literally give you this information. This is a Royal Mail. You can choose Hermes as well. And all you do is take it to the post office and then buy the postage. You can do it on this, but I did try this and actually it was a bit difficult to, the post office wouldn't accept it because it was a different kind. The way I actually prefer is when they choose Hermes because it's a downloadable shipping label and you just literally print it and take it to the shop and then send it so it's really easy so for example and I do think the user interface could be easier to understand here so what's happened here if it's green it means it's all good all finished and complete anything gray so I'm a seller here and you'll notice here it says buyer so I know that the ones that are seller and gray means it's something I'm waiting on so if I click on that, that's what I've sold. So this is great, it means I've done what I need to do, I'm just waiting on the buyer to confirm that she's received it. This gives it great peace of mind, because it means if she's not happy, then the funds are just kept until the seller, or the buyer, sorry, is happy with it. So this is just a chain of something that I bought. So I bought it, the postage was there, and then it says purchase successful, then wait to ship it. So then it tells me it's been shipped. Then it tells me it's been delivered. And then I can say that, yes, I did receive it. I'm happy with it. And then I will leave feedback. And I always, always leave good feedback if I'm happy with it because it just helps the seller out as a five-star review. And then it will literally say completed. So that trail is completely complete. Uh, but for here, I know that I need to send this out. If you're enjoying this video, please do consider giving it a like. It really helps me out. It's just there. Click like and why not stick around and subscribe to my channel for three videos every single week. So a couple of the differences. I found like the Depop shipping quite tricky compared to that. So it's really, really simple. The buyer buys it and what will happen is it will ask the buyer to or the seller to confirm the size of the parcel. You will say it's a medium sized parcel for maybe like a few items, small is usually what I would go for if it's just a top or some trousers or something like that. The buyer pays for all of the shipping costs, which is great, it literally does it all for you. And I found that really helpful. Uh, with Depop, I found things were more expensive, there's more designer stuff on there or just higher end stuff. So for me, it wasn't really necessarily what I would want to buy. I want to buy things that I would find in a thrift shop, a charity shop, and there's different ways to buy things on Vinted that I really enjoyed, so I thought I would share those with you as well. So because it's an app, it's really, really simple to sell things, and I will show you the full process of that very soon. I've got some more things I need to list. In fact, I need to list so much stuff. As I said, I usually just give my clothes to charity, but I thought, well, actually, every penny counts, and at the moment, as, you know, we're saving, you know, still for everything that we're trying to buy at the moment, if I can actually make some sales, and out of the things that I would just literally give to charity, at the the moment they're shut so it feels like the right thing to do at the moment as I can't donate them anyway as an app it's so perfect so easy because you can take the photos within the app and upload them directly it's just a really good way to minimize and declutter anything that you don't need anymore if you've grown out of it if you don't fit it if it doesn't fit your style just things like that so always list things that actually someone else will find joy from not stuff that's just trash that you just you know doesn't really give anyone any joy because it you know you should be selling things that actually you know are going to give someone else that nice feeling when they receive it it's also great i've seen lots of creative people come from you know flipping things from charity shops now they can actually upcycle them and run a proper business obviously you need to be careful of the tax implications i think it's a thousand pounds earnings you need to be paying tax on it so do your, do your research on that make sure you are dealing with it in the right tax way. There are a few features on the app which I thought were really good. So the first one is the swap feature. So I didn't see this on Depop. Basically it means if you've got a piece of clothing that you're selling, for example this item I'm selling, it's like a poncho, and I could have at the point of listing it, if I redo it now, so here you can see you can actually list it to be interested in swapping so that means if a buyer likes the look of it and they don't want to spend the money on it they might say hey come and look at my page is there anything you want that's similar value and that we can just literally switch so I thought that was a really good feature another thing that I love about listing on here is that you can actually do bundled discounts 
which means if someone wants to buy a bundle, which is a really good way of selling more than one item, you can set up discounts. So say they wanted to buy two, you can set that up that you can get 10% 10 10 off of that bundle, which is a really good thing to do. I also find that I don't really like to buy just one item unless it's more expensive because the shipping outweighs it. So that's a really good way of getting more people to come. You can also put it on holiday mode, which is fantastic if you're not there and it just means that you're not going to be making anybody wait for their deliveries. So that's a really nice feature as well. There's also a forum, which is great because it, it's just a really nice way of chatting to people and seeing, you know, how people get on with their sales and if people think they would be sold and things like that. So it's a really nice community as well. So as you can see where you get reviews, it's fantastic because it just means that other people know that you're a good buyer or a good seller and people are gonna have a really good transaction with you. So it's really, really important to make sure you give a really good review when people buy. I would always do a five star unless I'm unhappy, like four, three, I mean, I just wouldn't do that. I'd always give a five star. And that's really nice, like a little bit of extra info. The seller kept me up to date in every step and was very nice. Perfect condition, I'm really happy. I mean, that is just such lovely feedback and definitely something that I would also give somebody. There's also a section here for personalization. So I've done this, so basically I won't then see all of the other categories. So I've got women, so my sizes, and then the children's sizes as well. Just means that when I'm looking at my feed, I'm not gonna be bombarded with stuff that's actually not gonna be relevant to me and I'm gonna have to look through it all before I actually get to anything that I want to buy. Another good thing here is to put in a search. So what I would often do is go to Instagram. So let's have a look at Jess again that I featured in my wardrobe video. So what she may have here, let's have a look. Um, so here, so I'll have a look at this and I'll think, oh, I love those jeans. I will literally go to Vinted and I will search for white wide leg and then search for it. And then I can put in a size as well, women, size 10 and then show results and that's just going to format it well so the problem i find is if it's got a little bit of white it will show up because you can choose your colors so i would only want white here and literally you can go on you can see the different pictures and then you can decide whether to buy another really good feature here which i love is the favorite button so you can favorite something and then they will go into your favorited items so then you can see here this is a great way of keeping track to make sure things are, you know, if they're getting reduced in price. So for example, I really love this like boiler suit. Only one picture of it annoyingly. So this lady knows I have favorited this item, okay? So what that ha what that does now is gives her the option to message me directly and say, hey, I can take six pounds for this, would you be interested? So having that favorite on there is a really good way of making sure you can be in touch, making sure you know exactly when it's sold or if it's not sold yet and you can go back to it. Or maybe just, you know, have it there if you're not sure about it. I really love this shirt. I thought it'd go really nicely with white jeans. I favorited it, it's only three pounds anyway. I just wasn't sure if I needed it. So I'm not waiting for her to offer me something, but it's just to remind me when I, you know, go back onto the app if I still want it. So again, I'm, I'm and adopting those 30 day rule things. I'm not just gonna buy it. Oh my gosh, look at this, it's so cute. But you know, I don't know really if I'll ever go anywhere that I could wear it, let's be honest. But it's really nice. And what happened was she actually messaged me, I favorited this, and she messaged me saying that I would take 30 pounds for this. So it's a really good way of making sure that if the seller wants to drop the price, then you are the first to know about it. So the chat is a really nice way of being able to talk to sellers and buyers and just kind of like have that chat with them rather than having to go through like two official uh, means. <laughs> um, I want to just now quickly say about how to list things. So this is super, super easy. Really impressed with this. And one of the really cool things, sorry, you're up there. One of the really cool things I found with the listing is that you can list videos, which really helps items sell. So I may do a whole video on how to sell items or like tips of it, but the key things would be photographs, make sure they're lit up, make sure they're nice backgrounds. So if you've got a mannequin, amazing. That always makes me feel like they've made a real effort. Effort. if you can be bothered then put it on and try it on because that will literally make you make it sell so much quicker because people can see it another way is to put like 
props in the photo. That doesn't bother me too much as a buyer, but I know people do do that and it does help them sell. Another thing is maybe like putting things with an item. So like if I wanted to sell this white shirt, I would put like a pair of wedges and a sun hat in the corner and make it look nice like a flat lay on Instagram, just so it gives people an idea of what would go nicely with that and it makes them feel like they can actually see themselves wearing it because it's given them ideas. So on to how to sell, so easy, I love it. So as you can see, this is just like the feed and we're just gonna click sell. So it's so simple, upload photos, give a title, give a description and then add in a few bits of extra info. So upload photos. So I'm just gonna pop it up there because I haven't got a mannequin. I could really try it on for something like this, but I'm literally just gonna take a few pictures like that. So it's really important to like make sure that the colour is represented well. So I'm just going to take quite a few photos of it. And then here there's a little bit of like staining almost. So I'll just get a really good shot of that so the buyer knows exactly what to prepare for and if they're happy with that. The rest of it seems like really nicely kept. I haven't worn this really for, I only wore it a couple of times. And then yeah, take one at the back. And just as much info as I can give on it, really. So those are my pictures there, and then I'll do next. And then here I will write mustard faux suede biker jacket. Primark, size 10, um, faux suede biker jacket great for warmer days paired so i'm basically like loading it up with like info to inspire them as so they wear it at a barbecue or day out great condition slight marking on collar as shown so literally that. So that's a perfectly long description, gives some ideas and gives all the info they need. So then category, it's gonna be giving us a few options here, which is really handy. And then brand, it will already pick out your word so it knows that it's Primark. Size is 10. Annoyingly, you can't put more than one size because I would say that would fit an eight absolutely fine, but it won't let me do more than one. So in fact, I'm gonna add that in there. Size 10, but would fit and then condition is uh, very good. Is a light item, lightly used item that may have a slight imperfection. So that's fine. I'd use that one. And then obviously there you could put new with tags or new without tags or good or satisfactory. So then colors is already going to pick out that color that I've said mustard. And there isn't really anything else. So I'm just going to go with that. And then that is literally. Oh, sorry. Price. How much should we say for that? Let's see. It'll give you some ideas here of what other people are selling for. As you can see, really low prices. It's not like Depop where you'll be, you know, that would be like 20 quid, although it's only Primark. Um, so I'd go with different ideas here. Here you go, that's really similar. That's really similar. People are saying two pounds. So let's say two pounds. I'm gonna go with three pounds 50 because that gives me some leverage or leeway if people want to get a better price. I could put I'm interested in swapping, but I'm not. And then parcel size, I'm going to put light coat, so a medium, and done. And then literally upload, and that is as easy as pie. Done. It's literally there. So as you can see, really, really easy to list and so easy just to show exactly what you want to about it. To be fair, I didn't do those photos very well. I may retake some of those, but it was just to show you guys. So I just took a couple of me wearing it because I think that would actually help it sell. So I'm going to add those, probably add that one to it. So as you can see, I've just added that. So you can move them around just by pushing, holding it down. That's going to be my main image because I think it would just sell a lot nicer like that, a lot easier. So that's me. I've edited it and then I'm just going to save it.
so so simple and so quick i might keep it on for the rest of the video <laughs> it's quite nice really isn't it so another thing i wanted to chat to you about was uh selling so once you have sold obviously you need to package it up and i always have like a load of bags and wrapping paper tissue paper that i put my items in or i'm starting to do so just to make it like a little bit nicer so that when they are received they're really nice to you know it's like a present to you from you i also save other people's packaging so that it can just be reused and then i'll put my own items in there but i have bought actually 25 uh, bags from amazon i'll link it in the description it was so inexpensive because i didn't think i would have enough packaging if i did start selling some things so it's come like this and yeah they're huge um they are actually huge <laughs> wow really big so what i can do oh my god it just stuck to me <laughs> so what i can do is package it in one half and then fold it over so it gives it a little bit of extra protection and you know if you wanted to do it as a business you can put stickers in you can put uh, like a business card uh, just a really nice thing to unwrap so just think of it as when you receive things you want it to be nicely wrapped and packaged obviously if you're selling jewelry uh, then think about getting some bubble wrap and some protective wrapping so when it comes to buying I tend to really only buy if I've bought like a, a bundle because unless it's like an expensive thing which I'll show you in my haul because I got something beautiful uh then I wouldn't really spend the money on the shipping like the lady bought three pounds worth of clothes the shipping was 320 so it feels a little bit like why you know I'm paying more for the shipping so I'd always bundle things and that's great so when you actually look on someone's page and I'll show you what it's going to look like so let's go to my favorite items just to show you one thing so if I wanted to buy that it's only three pounds obviously the shipping is going to outweigh that so I would then look and then all under here are their bundles and she's down at 15% off if you buy more than one thing so I think that's a really good way of making sure people actually buy more than one thing she's also done this where I tell you about um putting things with the items so it gives people ideas and you can see everything is very nice and well designed on here and it looks good also as you can see it's not just clothing phone cases makeup lipsticks all the um nail varnishes that sort of thing and then at the bottom there's children's clothes so that means if i actually wanted that top actually let me just see if i can get anything else and it's actually going to save me in the shipping and also as a bundle cost as well so another question that people were asking me over on instagram was how do you get your money where does it go how do you get it so i think this is a really nice way that they do it what happens is when a buyer buys something as i said the money will be taken from the buyer and it will be put stored on the server of vinted and what will happen is once they get their items and they say that they're happy with their items, they can then mark it as okay. And then your funds will be put into your pot. So as you can see, oh, my thing has just arrived. So now my balance is 26 pounds. So it will list the items that I've sold. So some Ralph Lauren shirts, um, a fur gilet and some of Stuart's old t-shirts. So that money there is now available for me to withdraw to my bank account and you can put in your bank account details there and it goes straight to there so you don't pay any fees that end either. So hopefully that has answered most of your vintage questions, how to buy, how to sell, how to make money. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything additional you'd like to know about vintage, if you want a vintage haul, if you want to know anything else basically because I'd love to make it. I'm really loving this app. It's like going thrifting from your sofa. <laughs> so the joys of thrifting, secondhand shopping, but without having to leave your house. It's also a great way of saving money because you can buy things secondhand. You can help the environment by not letting that go to landfill. But also if you wanted to swap things, so you could actually buy a new top, but not pay for it because you can then swap some of your own items. So you're not actually spending money either, or you can use it as a side hustle and make money. There's so many options here on this platform. No seller's fees is a great bonus the deliveries actually just being done for you is really helpful and i just think the prices of stuff is a lot more affordable on vintage compared to depop but let me know what you think do you think depop's better or maybe poshmark if you're in america there's a few others let me know what you think and if this video was helpful please do give it a like and subscribe to stick around for more videos thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you so soon take care bye